And I'm going to make an assumption that a lot of you out there are hunting uh, food plots. I mean, a lot of you hunt food plots all season long, and uh, and then certainly into the late season. One of my favorite times to hunt a food plot, and we've had some great memories. Uh, Jake shot a real nice buck uh, a few years ago with a muzzleloader on a food plot. Uh, I shot a nice buck a couple years ago on a food plot. And, you know, it's a time where if you manage your property well, you should see more and more deer using your food plot as the season progresses. And that's something that I work with clients around the country on, is if you have quality habitat, have quality bedding cover, and then you are the lowest pressure parcel in the neighborhood, which is what you should be or try to strive to be, then you're going to collect some deer. And that ultimately comes into the late season and the issue of food plot hunting and hunting over food plot comes up. Now, deer are skittish this time of year, obviously. They've been through the rut, they've been through all the bow season, and they've been through gun seasons. So you get into December and they're pretty skittish. And so it's easy to, to spook them off a plot. You come out one time, spook them off a plot, they go somewhere else for their afternoon food source, and until they're spooked off over there, it seems that a lot of times they're not coming back for a week or two or more. And uh, no, in some cases you have just lots of deer and you'll have a couple hanging around. But if you're truly looking for a mature buck, they can leave that food plot pretty easy. So what I found, especially as it gets into the late season and deer are skittish, there's three ways that I like to hunt a food plot or at least hunt the power of the food plot and what that food plot brings to the table as far as creating an afternoon deer movement. First way, you know, we're, we're looking at a food plot right now and we're far enough away that I think I can talk at this level. I'm not talking full voice, but um, I believe if there's deer out there, we're not going to spook them at this level or deer that are coming in. The closest corner of the food plot is approximately 130 yards, and then the upper right corner is 170 yards. Um, I have a middle portion that's about 150. I have a trail going through the plot that's about 150. So we have all those marks mapped out. I have about 160 right back in the corner here before they come to the plot. I get a good shot there. And have a little bit above the plot that I could shoot uh, all within 200 yards and we've shot this muzzle loader out to that distance so we're pretty good. Uh, Jake shot his buck a couple years ago at 184, 184 yards. So this is the way I really like to hunt a food plot and I don't get any closer to these food plots um, all year because I want these food plots to consistently draw deer in all season long. I put a diversity of food plot plantings. We put brassicas on one side. We put cereal grains, oats, rye, uh, peas on the other side. Sometimes it's late planted beans. But the bottom line is I want to have these food plots working for me all season long. We put a, uh, a camera back in those food plots that um, I've only changed once. I've only changed a card once a season. And on that food plot in particular, late October, all of November, we can sometimes find that we're finding about 30 bucks, over 30 different bucks that use that, and most of them are using it during the day. And they're using it during the day, again, because we're not overpressuring it. So we get into this time of season, awesome time to hunt that food plot, but we cannot spook that food plot one time. If we spook it, then those deer are gone. Now I'm going to take a chance. If I shoot a deer on that food plot, that's what we have the food plots for. You know, part of building a herd, and then partly we want to hunt it too. My favorite way to hunt a food plot. Of course, we're sneaking in behind switchgrass. Um, we're getting into this blind and out without spooking deer. We're using the lay of the land to do so, and we're not getting so close that so we can't get in, in and out of a blind and spook and, and, and without spooking deer. Second way I love to hunt a food plot. We have blinds and stands back up on these hills on either side on funnels and benches and travel corridors with water holes and mock scrapes that actually funnel those deer to those points before they get to this food plot um, in the afternoon. So that's really one of my favorite ways to hunt because we can hunt off in a lot of those spots over and over again without spooking the movement because we watch the movement go by and, and we don't spook it. They get to the food plot, they're completely safe. Kind of like they're safe right now unless we see a deer we want to shoot. Um, third way that I really like to hunt a food plot or the power of a food plot is the bedding areas that are created because that food plot is there because that food plot lasts all season and because it creates that afternoon food source movement. So the bedding area is up in the hill right up here. Of course I hunt those during the rut. We might even post up there all day on opening day of gun season or the second day. But once it gets to this time of year I take a very limited amount of pressure up there during the morning hours because I don't want to spook out this entire movement. However, there's some really good times where it's frozen right now, it's in the low 20s. It's been in the teens and single digits at night and so when we get into those 
those warm-ups over the end of December coming up, and you have that nice soft snow late morning, mid-morning, and the temperatures are 40 plus, a lot of times you get a little fog that time of year, I have some great memories of going up there and hunting where those deer are bedded at the coldest time of the day. They're bedded at daybreak, they're conserving energy, but then they get up at, let's say it's daybreak at seven, they're getting up at nine, 8.30, 30, 10, and they're moving around and they're browsing. So if you can get into areas that you're not exposing yourself to that bedding area, getting in, and get in and out safely on soft snow where it's not as crunchy, then I'm hunting this food plot down here by hunting those bedding areas up there. So you want to maintain that movement, it all goes back to security. You can't spook out the food source. We expect these food sources to work for us all season long, not just one portion. We plant a diversity of, of forage on those, those uh, food plots from Northwoods Whitetails. And we're planting those because we want it to last all long. We want the movement to last all long, all season long. And when we get into late season, we are often rewarded for that movement, and we have been in the past because we maintain that movement, we haven't spooked it. And those are three ways, three great ways to hunt a late season food plot, but it doesn't mean you have to sit right on top of the food plot.